So Aaron's Titan is basically a huge puppet on strings. Let's talk about that. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Attack on Titan will return next year, but there is still lots to talk about. So don't forget to subscribe to get notified about everything Attack on Titan related and about more shows I want to cover on my channel. Today's video is my clarification and personal interpretation of the symbolism behind Eren's latest Titan form. I'm talking of course about the fact that he is held by strings like a huge puppet. His final form doesn't exactly screams freedom, which makes you wonder, who is pulling the strings? Who is in control of Eren's Titan making him move forward? This video will have few spoilers in it, but I will try to minimize them and they will only address the topic of this video. But if you want to remain completely spoiler free, stop watching now. For us to understand everything better, we first need to understand how Eren perceives time. The paths transcend time and space. It is the equivalent of what we know as the fourth dimension, a metaphysical place beyond the perception of the human eye, a place that exists beyond time and space. When Eren touched Historia's hand at the medal ceremony, his mind was stretched across all the memories he just witnessed. As he later confirmed to us readers, for him all those events felt like they were all happening at the same time. From that aspect, Eren's character is very similar to Dr. Manhattan from The Watchmen, who also perceives time all at once. Only Dr. Manhattan understands how time works, so for him it is not a source of confusion, Instead, it is the source of his indifference towards humanity. But still, both Eren and Dr. Manhattan are unique individuals who experience time differently from other people in their world. Unlike the more traditional time travel where we get to see a time machine or some transportation device being used, in Attack on Titan we don't have this and Eren doesn't actually travel anywhere. Because time works differently in the paths, all those events happen for him all at once. Unlike the show Dark, for example, where Jonah physically leaves one timeline and appears in another one, resulting in a younger and older Jonah occupying the same physical space. Believe it or not, Attack on Titan is using a more scientific approach for time travel, similar to quantum entanglement in theoretical physics, which in simple words means an object existing in different places at the same time. That is why for Eren, all versions of himself are him, a single person. Young Eren, grown-up Eren and future Eren are all Eren and not some separate entities. He is one person whose mind is spread across all those events from different times. We perceive time as a series of events in a distinct order. We can compare it to pages of a manga. With each flip of a page, we get a distinct order of events. When we go to the next page, we can no longer see the one we just read, although we can still remember it. This is like our past. And we can't see the next page, not until we turn it, and until then it is like our future. But for Eren, it's like all those pages are transparent layers, and all the events on those pages now appear as one big page full of events, with no distinct order for them. They are all happening now at the same time. And this is one way to visualize how Eren and also Dr. Manhattan perceive time. But why is that important? Because unlike the example of Jonah from Dark, Eren experiences time in a much different way. It is the source of his confusion, but I will argue it is even more than that. I am going to show you that this is not just simple disorientation and it has much deeper effects. Later in the story, Eren did confess that this confusion was what made him do certain things, but Eren's moments of confusion were shown to us even before that several times actually, ever since the medal ceremony. We just didn't have enough information to recognize them back then. So let's revisit a few iconic moments and try to see them from a different perspective. Eren facing the ocean. Right after witnessing his future memories in the medal ceremony and the events we just talked about, the scouts headed out towards the wall and finally got to see the ocean. Unlike his friends, and very similar to the events of the last episode, Eren seems to be disappointed even though the ocean is something he and Armin have been talking about for years. Eren is disappointed for several reasons. He has already seen the ocean in his father's memories, taking away this special moment, but that wasn't the main issue. Since he was young, Eren was told the outside world was empty and all just for him to explore. All he had to do was to defeat the titans. It was his prize, it was his definition of freedom, it was his wish. 
but the day he witnessed his future memories was also the day he first realized that this empty world he imagined doesn't exist. In fact, it is full of people who despise him and will never accept him completely. That was the reason he looked so detached when facing the ocean he waited to see for so long. But the biggest clue was in his words, and mainly in the way he said them. Hey, if we kill all our enemies, over there, will we finally be free? He sounds almost like a child asking if he can get ice cream after he finishes his dinner. Eren is describing killing all of their enemies over there as a child would describe doing something trivial he doesn't want to do, but he knows he has to do it in order to get what he wants. Keep this in mind as we move on to the next moment. Eren Jaeger and Frida Race This year we got to finally see the cave scene and Grisha's moment animated. In one of the most heartbreaking scenes of this season, we saw the moment Eren influenced his father pushing him to the edge after Grisha had second thoughts. If we take a look at that trip Eren and Zeke had in the past, we can see that Eren is mostly looking bored or indifferent towards everything that is going around him. We can see he is not as invested as Zeke. But that all changes in one specific moment. The moment Frida started explaining why she is not going to stop the Titans. In her speech, she legitimized the Eldians' collective death and said they should all just accept their punishments. Eren experiences time differently, and with that, he also experiences emotions in a different way. Arguably, for him, this is the day he lost his mother. She died only a few hours ago. Eren is experiencing his younger self's emotions, infused with his childhood rage, but not as a memory, but as an actual feeling or presence inside of him. At this moment, his younger self's pain was as real as Grisha standing right in front of him. Just like events all happened at the same time, the same thing happened to his emotions, spreading across all past and future, making Eren experience his emotions from when he was younger, only right now. That goes both ways, as we remember young Eren waking up in the anime crying in the first episode. I believe he simply felt his future self's emotions. This young Eren doesn't have his titan powers yet, so he still doesn't have a clue about what he just experienced. For him, it felt like a dream. Eren's emotions being spread across time is actually logical because our emotions are simply a byproduct of our brains. Eren's mind got twisted when all events happened at the same time for him, which directly affected his state of mind and therefore also his emotions, making him experience his childhood disappointment when he first saw the ocean, and also made him snap when Frida legitimized his mother's death when he experienced the same emotions he had on that day. But perhaps the biggest clue of his childhood emotions taking over is in our next moment, which is one of my personal favorites in Attack on Titan. Eren's Confession to Ramsey In chapter 131, The Rumbling, we get to see Eren's secret trip down the streets of Marley. He recognizes a boy from his future memories and he saves him from being lynched. He takes him to his camp and then breaks into tears, asking for forgiveness for what he is about to do. This moment with Ramsey is the explanation for Eren's disappointment when facing the ocean. He admits that the world was not like what he saw in Armin's book, and how he felt so disappointed when he finally realized it. Think about it, Ramsey doesn't know who Armin is, he doesn't know what Eren is even talking about. And also here, Eren is almost describing it like a child who didn't get what he was promised, that things didn't go his way. And that is not by accident, because as his emotions are spread across past, present and future, Eren with Ramsey is experiencing his younger self's emotions. He can literally feel his childhood pain right at this moment, and this was his breaking point. But why here, and why in front of Ramsey? Did you ever think why this moment happened in front of a kid, and not in front of some random adult? It's almost like Eren chose someone he felt comfortable opening up to, Someone who could understand his pain, the pain of a young boy, which was the same age as Ramsey when he lost his freedom. In the most simple words, this is younger Eren's emotions with the regret of older Eren. Eren is simply Eren. He is not a different version of himself. He is everything in one person, 
everything in one mind. And that is the source of his confusion and also why his emotions spread throughout space and time as well. And to finalize everything, we finally see Eren asleep inside his titan while his younger self in the paths moving forward towards that site. That moment was here to finally confirm that the one who was pulling the strings all this time was actually Eren himself driven by his younger self's emotions, and that sight was always something he imagined since he was young. That was also the big twist, because Eren was following his future self, while his future self was driven by younger Eren's emotions and personal wish, creating again a loop of events similar to the time loops we have in our story. That is also why Eren is using his younger self's words, I will kill them all, every last one of them a phrase his younger self constantly used. He is not repeating it for the sake of the fandom so we will have a fun catchphrase. He is saying it because this is exactly how he feels right now, which is also why the image of his mom being eaten is played right next to it. The fact that the emotions of young Eren were always in control was actually shown to us before in the scene where Armin tried to wake up Eren's titan. In his mind, there was young Eren with his family and it was his rage that woke up his titan. This is the same rage. Those are the same emotions. This is the same Eren. I would like to believe that every time Eren was asleep or lost control over his titan, he was actually controlled by his younger self's emotions. For example, the moment he went berserk over Annie's titan. Like his titan is the manifestation of his childhood rage. That was also foreshadowed in the Red Swan OP, where we see young Eren running around while grown-up Eren is simply staring at a distance, at that sight. But again, that is just my personal opinion and feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. What made young Eren want freedom so much? When did it all start for him? Was it back then on that tree? Or maybe when Ymir freed the pigs? No, for Eren it started here at this moment with his father. As we later find out, it is part of this panel. Up until the end, Eren never found out why he wanted to move on forward. But at that same panel, we readers also got the answer, as we see the moment Grisha tells Eren, you are free. Simple words that can mean so much. They can simply mean you are free from guilt or captivity. But without any restrictions, they can also mean you are free to do as you please, whatever you want, without no one stopping you. The complete form and also the definition of freedom. But how can simple words get so much power behind them? The answer is in the same panel. As Grisha tells it to his son, his eye opens and we can see the presence of his titan power already inside of him, since birth as the future holder of the attack titan. Just like Eren told Zeke, he was always like this, but never understood why for himself. And like the lyrics in the rumbling, nobody knows what's inside of me. We finally got to see the presence that was inside Eren since he was born. That presence is the reason why those words got engraved into Eren's essence, forming his wish and eventually leading to the sight that older Eren also wanted to get to. The sight was the manifestation of young Eren's greatest wish and his own definition of freedom. But that is a conversation for another video, which you can watch right now. If you want to know the full explanation and extent of Eren's wish and how it became the sight, feel free to check out this video where I explain the final chapter and the character of Eren in much greater details. This video has chapters, so you can skip right to the Eren part. Also, you might find this video interesting too, where I gave my own theory about the mysterious eye we got in the anime this season. And that is all for this video, my titan loving friends, and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you all real soon in my next video, and even sooner in the comments. But until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.